Hi everyone. Today we're going to cover a few tips on making responsive pages in Builder. Um, if you haven't seen our other tutorial video, I would watch that first, a basic using the visual editor, and this expands upon it. So, one of the first things you might notice when you play around is anything you click on will have these little dots. They control the size and shape of things in Builder. But, there's some important things to know about these. So you might be familiar with things like Keynote or PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, Google Docs, whatever. They might have had something like this, where you can just drag and position anything anywhere. This is great, but it doesn't work well for web design, because with web design, you want things to fill space, shrink until they can't fit their contents anymore, fit the text inside. There's a lot of information they need to make use of to know where they position in themselves. And, you know, if you take something like a keynote, if you resize, everything inside doesn't resize to properly fit the new screen sizes. So when we're making web pages, there are standard conventions that we use to make this fairly easy. We talked about it before, but things either sit next to each other or on top or below each other. So that means when you grab any of these handles, they're going to be using that same logic. So when I grab most things and pull down, they're saying push down this amount from what's above. Oops, go away Siri. Um, so if I'm grabbing this and pulling down, it's pushing away. You see this little blue line? It's hard to see with the blue background, but when you're pushing things away, it's pushing away that much. Um, when you're pushing from the left, it's pushing from the left that much. Let's do a simple example here where I drop in a new box and try and make this a little easier to see. So I'm going to make this new box and I'm going to give it a background of red so we can see it. Cool. That's a very harsh red. Let's make it pink. That's prettier. So now I'm going to do this. When I push it down or stay sideways, and a little pro tip, if you hold the Option or Alt key, you'll push away both sides evenly. So now one thing that's really important to do is realize this is not an exact width box. It's saying push away from the walls this much, but otherwise fill the space. So what we can do here is we can test it out. So if you have noticed or not, there's this little handle at the edge of your preview. You should always be fiddling with this because remember when making websites, we're not designing for one screen size, we're designing for every screen size. So it's really useful to always be grabbing and seeing what happens when I change screen sizes. And what you can see is this box always fills the width, but always stays this width away. And you see that blue line that's a solid line telling you that. Now we can lay this out differently. For instance, if we give an exact width here, like 400 pixels, we can then say, and use these align controls to say, say centered, say to the right, or stay to the left. So centered, we have an exact width and we just stay in the middle. Exact width and left, it stays to the left. This is pretty important. And now if we drag off of this side, we can have it push away a bit. This can take some getting used to. If you're used to how like PowerPoint and Keynote works, you can just drag anything anywhere and it's that way. You need to remember, again, we're always designing for all screen sizes, so play around. You might be used to also, when you're dragging from the side, it's dragging the width. And in this case, it is going to be repositioning the width. But if we fill the entire width, if we click the center button twice, it'll fill everything. Dragging the right side instead grabs, oops, it's a little hard to grab, grabs the side and pulls away. And again, if we resize our browser, we see it's always staying that far away. So it's good to also to always kind of have a sense of this. And if you're ever in doubt, if you're not sure, when you're grabbing these handles, they try and make their best guess at what you want. If you have a box with the width and you grab the right side, usually we'll change the width. If it's a full width box, we don't want to edit the width to a specific value because it's always supposed to fill. So instead, we're going to be pushing away the margins on one side or the other. It's important to know, too, that if you're ever in doubt or if these handles aren't handling how you expect, if you scroll down, these are your main sort of positioning um, controls. Margins, which is basically bumping things. Bump things from the left, bump things from the right, from the top, you can add a bottom to bump them down. And paddings affect inside. So if we have text inside this box, we can adjust the paddings. So the padding top bumps things inside, down. You can also see these little handles appear to do paddings as well. As you mess around with this, you'll understand how CSS works a little better and get more familiar. And uh, I might mention this multiple times in this tutorial, but if you're ever in doubt, you can always chat us. Hit the widget and say like, hey, 
this thing isn't working how I'm expecting. Please help me out with how to make this layout. And we're happy to help because CSS can have a bit of a learning curve and Builder gives you really precise control of the layout that you want. Sometimes it can be helpful to have someone explain. Especially if you import pages off of your website, it could have been all sorts of code to build the layout originally. If things don't work perfectly on imported code, things can be a little more difficult in those cases because there's lots of wrapper boxes and this and that. Just chat us. We're happy to help and say, oh, this is a grid layout. Here's how to work with it for what you need and modify it, that type of thing. Um, let's see. So a couple other things to know. Um, when you're editing things, you can also edit the way that they lay out. So if we add some columns, for instance, say for instance you want a grid or you want something else. So in this case, we have two columns. They snap to vertical when you get to a certain device size. You can change that in the advanced options when these turn vertical. Um, but say we want a grid. Take a look at the child layout options. When you select a box, this affects everything inside. So we can change this to be like a scroll. Now, if we had a lot of these inner boxes, I'm going to copy paste a bunch, they would scroll left and right. Or we can change this to be a grid. And the grid, oops, remember to select the container. And you can always use the layers menu to know. So I don't want the specific item. I want the box holding all the items. And let's make that a grid. Cool. Now, I'm going to delete this guy. When it runs out of space, things flop to the next line. And again, let's resize to see, oh, that's cool. Now, if we want a little more control here, we can go down and tell the items inside to center a line. That's nice. Now we have all these grid items, but we want some space in between. So you might notice that maybe we want to add a uh, bigger width here, or in this case, oops, that's editing the margin. But maybe I want the width to be what I edit here. So let's give it a width of 200 or something. Cool. But now say I want to do that to all these boxes. Well, that'd be annoying to do it one by one, but we have some good tricks here. One is to click on the container, right click, and click select all children. Cool. Now anything we do, like set a width of 200, or set a margin right of 10, or just making edits this way too, like margin top, will affect all of them. That's nice. You can also click on an element, uh, if I unselect, click on an element and hold shift to click on more, you can affect all of the ones you selected equally. Now what if, for example, it's you've got these three items and you always want to edit them the same and they're not you know, all the children of a box and clicking all three is annoying. We can do more stuff too to make this easy. We can go in we can add a layer name. I'm going to call this the big box. And if all three of these have the exact same layer name, we can right click any one of them and say select all elements with same name and why do we not select them all? Oh, that's because this one I used a capital a little different. There we go. Now we can select all layers with the same name, and ta-da, those three are selected. So if you have a lot of items sprinkled throughout that all have the same styles, you want to update them at once, give them a layer name, or if you want to get really advanced, you can give all of the items, if you're a CSS developer, a class, and call it my box. And then anytime I right click here, I can do select all elements with the same class. So this can be useful for tagging many things and editing them all at once as well. Um, if you're really advanced, know that there's CSS properties down here. You can edit any type of CSS property here to any value you want. Um, change this to content box, oops, content box, whatever you need. Um, and if you're super duper advanced, you can edit custom element attributes as well as tag names. Um, and you can also edit fully custom CSS and JavaScript code. Just type whatever you want. My class and display none, whatever it is. Now, let me move my head a little bit over um, and see if there's anything else I was supposed to cover for this. Um, I think that about covers all the main things, animations, layers. I think most of this stuff is somewhat self-explanatory, but like always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is steve at builder.io, and you can always chat me in the widget.
and ask for help at any time. And if I'm not there, somebody else should be there to help you very quickly. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, please try out all the tricks that you learned today, and uh, chat us if you need any help. Thanks.